Good evening, good evening. Thank you so much for being with us at Pittsburgh Church uh, there in Pittsburgh, Kansas. We are excited to be with you and Harvest Christian Center and anyone else that sees this. Pastor Joe Clowers, amazing man of God, thank you for inviting me to speak on spiritual warfare. I'll be speaking more from the heart tonight as I most often do. Pastor Joe knows that. Um, going to talk about spiritual warfare, prayer. Prayers are spiritual warfare. Daniel chapter 10 tells us in verses 10 through 13 that he, he's talking about how that, uh, that the angel said that he had heard their prayer to begin with, but it had been a war in the heavens for the 21 days. And that he talked about how that the, the battle was going on in heaven for the 21 days and how that war was being fought. And I thought about that, and I thought about how we could talk about that. But I really want to go into something a little bit different. I want to talk about the weapons of our warfare and prayer being one of those weapons of our warfare, prayer being a weapon of our warfare. So turn with me, if you will, to 2 Corinthians 10. I want to talk about the angels fighting on our behalf. I want to talk about our weapons, our weapons. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Prayer is a mighty weapon of God. It's a weapon for spiritual warfare, for pulling down strongholds. What's a stronghold? Well, we live in a world right now that promotes fear. They promote fear in every way that it's possible. And as Christians, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of a power and of love and of a disciplined sound mind. So we have to literally determine in our hearts that our prayer is going to be bold before God, that we are going to use it as a weapon. Why is our weapons bold? Why is our weapons strong? Because they are not carnal. They are mighty through God. They are mighty through God. Prayer can pull down strongholds. Fear is a stronghold. Anxiety is a stronghold. Sickness is a stronghold. And sometimes we see things like this, and we see things where people uh, pray prayers kind of like this. Uh, God, if you could, if you would, maybe I would, uh, uh, and we pray and we hope and we, and we doubt and, and we wonder and we, we, that is not how God told us to pray. God said we come boldly in Hebrews chapter 4, that we are to come boldly before the throne of God, boldly before the throne of God. How many times have you prayed a prayer that is, that is so hopeful but doubtful, to be honest, uh, a man who prays and, and doubts is like a wave on the ocean. It's, it's, it's literally, you're going to be tossed to and fro. We have to pray bold. Now, that's not to pray what we want God give everybody a Cadillac. We're praying God's will for the situation. But we also understand the concept of that, that we are to pray bold prayers. Hebrews 4.16 tells us to pray bold prayers. Jude 1.20 tells us to pray in the Holy Ghost, strengthening our faith, strengthening ourselves in faith. Now, how do I do this? How do I do this? Well, this is where it gets down to my heart with you tonight. I, and I know this is quick. We only got 10 minutes or so to do this. And I know that this is quick. But this is where the heart comes in. We can believe God's word in our mind. We can know it. But if we don't believe it in here and take it literally and apply it, then it's not going to be a weapon that we can use for warfare. Prayer it can be a weapon that changes everything, but it has to be something that we believe in with all of our hearts. It has to be something that we believe God's word for what he said. So I want to give you one more thing very quickly. Turn with me with, to Matthew chapter 6, and this is, this is how Pastor Mark does it in Harvest Christian Center. This is how we believe. This is how I believe in Sweet Home Oregon. This is how I believe. Matthew chapter 6, beginning with verse 9, Jesus said these words, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's the simple Lord's Prayer, and you've heard it all your life. And maybe you've, even, maybe you've even heard this part of it. But I want you to hear it again one time from my heart. I want you to hear this. If you 
are struggling with your prayer life, if you're struggling with believing, boldly praying, if you want to have a spiritual warfare of prayer, then take two words from this prayer, two words from this prayer and begin to apply them. Jesus said, pray in this manner. Pray in this manner. He said, pray our Father. The word our, when Jesus told them to pray our Father, Jesus said, I want you to take your petition. I want you to take your petition when it lines up with the will of God. When it lines up with the will of God, Jesus said, you take your petition. That's what a prayer is, is a petition. And you make it known to God. He said, you take it and sign it, our Father, and I will be the co-signer on your petition. He didn't say, pray, my Father. He said, pray, our Father. Jesus said, pray, our Father. Father, how can I boldly pray for sickness to be gone? How can I pray for cancer to be moved? How can you pray for God to deliver from the things going on in the world and pray and expect and believe God to move? Because if we're praying in direct and line with God's word, if God says healing is something he paid for, we can pray for healing and believe. But if we pray doubting, we should not expect that to happen. But when I pray... Imagine this. Imagine this in your mind. Imagine Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, sitting at the right hand of God. Imagine him sitting there. Now imagine this when you pray. Father, I want you to take this fear out of my life. The, the things that I hear about all the things going on in the world have created so much fear in me. I'm afraid to go to church. I'm afraid to go to the store. I'm afraid to do everything on earth. Fear, anxiety, unforgiveness. Father, I need you to take these things away from me. And Jesus said, in his word, he said, I have come that you can be an overcomer. He said, I come to set the captives free. Do you know what actually happened? Jesus, sitting at the right hand of God, says, here's his petition. This is my brother's petition. And if you notice, I co-signed it. Father, I co-signed the petition. And I believe with everything in me when the scripture tells me that the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. When I become lined up with God's word and pray in accordance to his will, and I ask our Father, when I say, see, it's easy to know that up here, but until I believe that in my heart, till I apply that in my heart, that weapon is nothing more than words speaking from a man who is flesh and carnal. But when I begin to believe what God said, that my weapons are uh, not strong through me, but they are strong through God. When I believe that Jesus will sign my petition, the one that said in this world there will be trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. I can literally say when I pray, when you pray, you want to know why your prayer is powerful? Because when you pray in accordance to God's will, and you are in line with God's will, submitted to him, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he must flee. That is not just a scripture on a page. That becomes life. When you begin to apply that to your life, it becomes a weapon of warfare that can drive the enemy away. You can bind and loose. You can use God's word if you can apply it in your heart and not just in your mind. It's easy to cry out to God to take away the fear, but until you apply the discipline of God's word into your heart, get it out of your head and into your heart. When we start believing our Father, when I pray, Jesus just signed my petition. When you pray and you believe it and it's in accordance to God's will, there's not an enemy in the pits of hell that can stop. Why? Because God's promises are real, they are true, and they are what he said he would do. Why do you think Daniel had an angel touch him on the shoulder and say, we begin to move the moment you prayed? I say this to you with just a few seconds left because I don't want to go over on time, but I say this to you with everything in me. If you can only believe, 
if you can only believe and pray believing, God will move. You want to fight spiritual warfare? Believe what God's word said is true and watch what God will do when you don't doubt how powerful prayer is. This is Pastor Mark saying thank you for allowing me into your church today. Thank you, Pastor Joe. That's how Pastor Joe can keep going when he's doing it all alone is because he knows it in his heart, not just in his head. Hey, we love you guys. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.